Welcome back everyone and in this video we'll solve this uh, amazing PYQ based on the concepts of friction. So let's read the problem statement. The problem statement is that we have two blocks of mass m1 and m2 that are connected to each other by a massless inextensible string of length 0.3 meters and they are placed along a diameter of a turntable. The coefficient of friction between the table and mass m1 is 0.5 while there is no friction between mass m2 and the table. The table is rotating with an angular velocity of 10 radians per second about a vertical axis passing through its center. The masses are placed along the diameter of the table on either side of the center O such that M1 is at a distance of 0.124 meters from O. The masses are observed to be at rest with respect to an observer on the turntable. Calculate the frictional force on M1. So the situation is something like this. This disc is rotating with an angular velocity of 10 radians per second. So the mass m1, let's call the distance from the axis as r1. So r1 is given to be 0.124 meters. Now as the length of the string is 0.3 meters, so the block m2 will be at a distance of r2 will be equal to l minus r1, which is 0.176 meters. Okay. In the question statement, it's uh, given that the masses are at rest relative to the turntable. So let's say we are observing the blocks by taking the frame of reference as the turntable. So in that case, we have to apply a centrifugal force, right? Which will be radially outward. So the magnitude of the centrifugal force will be on this block will be M1 omega squared R1. In this block M2 will be M2 omega square R2. Okay, so now if we observe block M2, there is no friction between block M2 and the disc. So the only other force acting on block M2 in the radial direction is the tension. Now this block is at rest as we are in the frame of reference of the disc. So we can simply say T equals M2 omega square R2. So now we have the tension in the string. So if we calculate this, it will be M2 is given to be 5, omega is given to be 10, R2 is 0 0.176. So the tension in the string comes out to be 88 newtons. Okay, so now let's calculate the magnitude of the centrifugal force is 124 newtons. M, M1 omega square R1 is 124 newtons and the tension here is 88 newtons. So the thing is the friction force will try to support this 88 newton so that finally this block is at rest. So the friction force acting on this mass M1 will be radially inward and its magnitude will be equal to 124 minus tension T which was 88 which will come out to be 36 Newton. So that was question number one. Now question number two says that what should be the minimum angular speed? Okay, now we are varying the angular speed so that the masses will slip from this position. So as we keep on increasing the omega, you can, as you can see, this, this centrifugal force will start to increase and there will be a point where this friction force over here will reach its limiting value. After which if we start, if we raise the omega by even a little bit, this block will start to slip towards the right side the friction will start to approach the limiting value which is actually equal to mu m1g, right? So this comes out to be 50 newtons, okay? Moment before slipping, the friction reaches a value of 50 newtons. So let, if we write the force balance equation for block m1, it will be T plus F which is 50 newtons equals m1 omega square r1. And now if we write the force balance equation for block m2, we get the tension T as m2 omega square r2. So after calculation this comes out to be 138.9. So so if you do the calculations you'll get the limiting value of omega as 11.78 radians per second. So what happens after 11.78 radians per second is that this is that this friction will reach its limiting value and it won't be enough anymore to prevent slipping. So in problem number three they're asking how should the masses be placed with the string remaining taut so that there is no frictional force acting on mass m1. So if the friction force is zero, then the tension T would be equal to m1 omega square r1. And also we know that tension T is equal to m2 omega square r2. So basically we can equate these two centrifugal forces. And from here, we'll get r1 divided by r2 as m2 divided by m1 and writing r1 as 0 0.3 minus r2. So from here, we'll get the value of r2 as 0 0.2 meters which means R1 must be 0.1 meters. So the mass M1 has to be kept at a distance of 0.1 meter from the axis and the mass M2 has to be kept at a distance of 0.2 meters from the axis. So as to make sure that the friction force is zero. So that was it for this problem. If you guys do like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. 
If you have any problem recommendations for me, please comment down below and I'll try to make a video on it. And that's it. Thanks for watching guys.